So you have never been on a bike based on a Buffang mid-drive kit? That's okay, I forgive you. Be my guest. Hi everybody, this is Luke. In this episode I'm gonna talk about my second ever e-bike build, the old red rock rider from the 90s, that you might already have seen in one of my videos, equipped with a Buffang BBS02B, the 36 volt 500 watt version. Just to give you a little bit of context, my first experiment building an e-bike was on a second-hand French bike on which I installed a Tongsheng TSDZ2, 36 volt 500 watt mid-drive motor. And then the third one was again a rock rider, but this time a brand new ST540 with a powerful 48 volt 750 watt Buffang BBS02B. Yes, there are many variants for the same Buffang model. Some one of you might remember that I already shared a video about a test drive on this second build of mine. And maybe that same someone will also remember that video as being not so good in general, mostly for the lack of really useful content. So today, after 21 months since that video, we will revisit this bike and some of the changes I made to it. I'll talk about my experience building and driving it. And finally, we'll see if, after almost two years of diligent service, it was worth building it, or if, on the contrary, it deserves what the future holds for it, which is being disassembled. Yeah, you heard that right. Now, without further ado, just sit back, relax, and let's dive into it. Let's talk briefly about the building process. If you want the complete story, here is the video I made a couple of years ago. For this specific bike, the process was fairly easy, meaning that every step went almost as expected. The only unattended surprise was the death of my previous battery, which was lower in capacity, so I would have changed it anyway in the near future. Here are the reasons why the build went without unattended issues. First, the frame was old and very common. The bottom bracket of this bike is between 68 and 73 mm wide, with an inside diameter between 33.6 and 34 mm. Moreover, the rear tubes on the frame are very close to each other, leaving a lot of space for the mid-drive motor and its default 44 teeth chainring. Second, the presence of mechanical brakes. As I said in another video, Having mechanical brakes simplify a lot the process of installing brake sensing levers, which we know being very important for our safety driving both cadence and torque sensing motors. If you haven't watched it yet, go check that video for more insights. This build has V-brakes, which are very easy to be maintained and are still very effective for a 500 watt kit. Starting from higher wattage, I should suggest mechanical disc brakes for your future builds. As usual, after installing my mid-drive motor, I had to recalibrate my rear derailleur to avoid undesirable jumping chain when pushing more than 400 watt on my poor little chain. Something I regret on both my first and this second build is having the front derailleur removed. That seems like a useless piece over there, but the front derailleur has the specific purpose to keep the chain track in line. It prevents the chain from jumping away from the motor chain ring when you're bouncing on rocks with your bike, even if it's fixed. On both bikes without it, when I land from a jump, the chain jumps away. On my last build, that never happened. And there you have it. This is the complete build, after many iterations of piece replacements tire replacements and handless setup changes on the handlebar. Let's have a closer look at what's installed. You can see the P850C color display, the smartphone holder, which I consider essential, and the two buttons that control respectively the headlight and the horn. If you want to know more, I made a specific video which explained that better. I made the mistake to pass all the cables on the front of the motor. I really regret that decision. But I'm very happy about my foldable pedals, the rear basket and the fender 
which is fixed below it. And keep the backlight always clean. And this is the result in low light conditions. The backlight is connected directly to the 6 volt wires from the motor, while the front one takes the power from the 36 volt battery wires. Let's now talk about the real stuff, the driving experience. There is a lot to cover here, so let's start talking about noise. You might be surprised, but neither the TSDZ2 nor the BBS02B are noisy at all. I've been on up motors before, and they can make some weird noise, but talking about those two mid-drive kits, even if they do a little bit of noise, the wind will cover any sound coming from the motor or the chain. Sometimes I can hear the sound of my tires biting against the asphalt, but that's all I hear. The same for the throttle. Now, about the difference between the two brands, I already made a comparison video where I addressed the differences. So let's go straight to the hot topic, the pedaling sensing system. I've read all kind of things in the comment section of my videos. Someone claiming one motor is better than the other, just based on the type of pedaling sensing system. I think it's because not everyone knows exactly what that is and how that affects your biking experience. I'll try to describe it as honestly as I can, but to really understand it I think you should first try both of them. With the Tongsheng, which has a torque sensing system, you'll have a more authentic bicycle feeling, meaning that whatever the assistance level, you'll always participate with the motor in providing the force. Of course, the higher the assistance level, the faster you'll go. This is very good for your fitness, but it can be really painful if you're tired or in case of long steep climbs, you should consider that. With the Bafang, which has a more classic cadence sensing system, you'll have more of an e-motorcycle experience, meaning that each assistance level has a target speed and a target power expected to be delivered. If you don't reach those targets just with your legs, the motor will cover the remaining part for you. So, first scenario. You feel aggressive and make the most of the targeted effort for that selected assistance level. The motor will help you just a little bit. Second scenario, you might feel lazy and just go pedaling while the motor will do all the effort at your place. In both cases, your speed will be guaranteed, but in the second case you should be worried about your battery. I hope this clarifies what to expect from the two different types of system. In the end, it's just a matter of preferences. With the Tongsheng, I found myself more inclined to push harder. I feel self indoors because the motor is my partner and it will work as hard as me. With the Bafang, I just feel myself like being on an electric scooter. But I know that if the battery is there, I'll reach my destination, no matter if I'm tired or not. I hope this clarifies the enigma. Let's spend now a few words about the power that you might need. The difference between a 250 and a 500 watt motor is quite remarkable. On a 250 watt motor, in case of steep climbs, the effort of your legs will be substantial. A 500 watt motor will be able to cross a bridge with very little help from your side. Of course, the more you will help it, the more energy you will save. But in case you live in a not so flat area, with lots of ups and downs on your way, Maybe you should consider the 750 watt version. I can confirm that living in a mountain town is not the same as living in a flat area. For the second case, even if you have a few bridges to cross, a 500 watt will make you very happy, saving you a lot of effort. Talking about range, with this 500 watt build and a 36 volt 15.6 ampere hour battery, I can easily make between 30 to 40 kilometers averaging 35 km per hour and reach my destination with still 30% of charge which is quite good considering also unforeseen events one of which is the wind wind is your invisible enemy it can slow you down or in an imperceptible manner it will simply lower your battery while your Bafang motor tries to keep you at the ideal speed for the selected assistance level when the wind is stronger than 18 km per hour and it's against you, it can be a real range killer. I also have a second spare battery of the same capacity, 
in case I need to go for longer trips. With a 250 watt motor and the same battery, you could easily double that range. That's why I always suggest at least 36 volt 11 ampere hour batteries for 250 watt motors, and at least 36 volt 15 ampere hour or 48 volt 11 ampere hour batteries for a 500 watt one. Just check if your motor is designed for 36 or 48 volt. If your motor uses a torque sensing system like the Tongsheng TSDZ2, you'll be able to save more energy, as we have seen in these previous tests. For that one, a 36 volt 13 ampere hour battery could be enough for a 500 watt version. Back to the Bufang. The 750 watt will of course be stronger and faster than the 500 watt version, but it will also need way more energy. That's why the 48 volt is the only version that exists. For this eager motor, you might be good with at least 48 volt 15 ampere hour battery. I love driving this bike. It is not crazy fast as the 750 watt version, but it still has the potential to reach more than 40 km per hour of speed. That's insane and can be very dangerous. Yes, because it's such a small bike, I mean, for me. It's a medium sized 26 inch wheels and I'm 1.90 meters. I need to be very careful when I drive this thing. Recently I just slipped on the ground as I was exiting from a road which had moisture on it. So you should always remember to wear the helmet and gloves. Otherwise, the risk is to end up like my poor last phone. Rest in peace. Il che mi permette di ricollegarmi all'ultima domanda con cui vi ho lasciato all'inizio del video. Perché sto parlando in italiano? Uh, se non capite la mia lingua, attivate i sottotitoli, cioè il pulsantino in basso. Perché statisticamente la maggior parte di voi ha già lasciato il video. Mentre per i più temerari, che sono rimasti fino alla fine, visto che vi ho invitato a casa mia, facciamo che parliamo la mia lingua d'origine. La taglia della mia bicicletta rappresenta in effetti un limite per uno spilungone come me. Quindi stavo pensando di smontare il motore da 500 watt senza tuttavia rinunciare né al motore né alla bicicletta. E ho un piano al riguardo. Adesso ve lo racconto. Allora, intanto per salvaguardare il vostro cellulare esistono delle, dei marsupi di piccole dimensioni che si possono attaccare al telaio, questo chiaramente se non state utilizzando il vostro cellulare per la navigazione. E io lo sto utilizzando nella bici uh, con il motore da 750 watt e devo dire che mi sto trovando molto bene uh, perché in effetti il cellulare nel mio caso si è distrutto perché uh, lo stavo tenendo in tasca quindi quando sono caduto la prima cosa che è successa è che ha toccato l'asfalto e si è frantumato per quanto riguarda il mio piano non posso ancora rivelarvelo nella sua completezza perché i dettagli non li conosco bene ancora neanche io però l'idea è più o meno questa voglio rimuovere il kit da 500 watt dalla bici che avete visto e uh, vorrei tenerlo per poterlo poi installare su un'altra bicicletta che ho intenzione di comprare quindi sarà probabilmente una bici usata ma uh, più o meno simile a quella che già ho utilizzato per uh, la build con il Bafang da 750 watt ossia una bicicletta che deve essere perlomeno XL come taglia perché deve andare bene per me e vorrei anche qualcosa con i freni a disco meccanici però, non idraulici e per le ragioni che vi ho già spiegato in altri video e questo mi permetterà quindi di rifare, uh, di risistemare il kit da 500 watt però in maniera corretta quindi evitando di lasciare il, uh, i cavi nella parte anteriore e invece questa volta facendoli passare da dietro proprio come ho fatto con la bici con il motore da 750 watt e voi direte ok e quindi che ci fai con quella bicicletta? molto semplice dovete sapere che adesso uh, il motore Tongsheng sempre da 500 watt è inutilizzato perché la bici su cui è montato, che è pesantissima, quindi ho intenzione proprio di eliminarla, 
la stava utilizzando la mia ragazza, solo che adesso non le serve più. Quindi sto pensando di smontare anche quello, trovare il modo di farlo arrivare in Italia, dove c'è appunto la bicicletta che adesso monta il Bafang, e ehm, montarla lì. In questo modo avrò eh, due biciclette, una con motore Bafang, l'altra con motore Tongsheng, da 500 watt entrambe, nello stesso luogo, e che utilizzano la stessa batteria, perché, come vi ho già detto, io ho due batterie dello stesso identico tipo. Questo mi permetterà di fare intanto dei test molto più sensati e poi di portare qualcuno con me quando vado a fare i giri in bici. L'unico vero problema è che questa cosa richiederà del tempo, perché io non scenderò giù in Italia prima di almeno qualche mese, quindi uh, fate una cosa. Intanto iscrivetevi al canale perché presto potrebbe tornare la review di un altro motore, questa volta un hub motor e questa volta da 250 watt, quindi cambiamo completamente tipo di motore. Non vi dico nient'altro perché altrimenti vi rovino la sorpresa, iscrivetevi e ci vediamo presto. Grazie per aver guardato, alla prossima!